Hey, tonight I want to speak to you about don't bypass the process. Turn the person beside you and say, don't bypass the process. Turn to your second choice. Say, don't bypass the process. <laughs> if you're on the end, you're excused. You didn't have a second choice. <laughs> I think we just live, we live in a world where instant gratification is everything, hey? Everything is now. Everything is in the moment. Everything is, I need it. I remember um, when I was maybe six or something, we had our cross country and I really wanted to do well in the cross country. And I woke up and I thought, on the day of the cross country, I need to train for this. <laughs> so I started running laps of our house <laughs> to, to train, to get my body ready. Who knows that's not how training for something works. You can't just, <laughs> Gabe's like, not really. You can't just open the exam and be like, got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> Some things take time. Sometimes there's a process. You know, the Bible says we're called for a great purpose. The Bible says that there's an amazing future that lies ahead of us. The Bible says that your life really matters. And sometimes we can feel that and sometimes we don't feel that. Sometimes it feels like if I could just get a little bit further on, if I could just get that, if I could just get there, then I would feel fulfilled. Then I would feel like my life has purpose. I think there's something really different about how, how God calls us to live. That actually sometimes we get so obsessed with, with finish lines, with the next thing that we actually miss what God's trying to do in the process. And that's why I'm trying to be a bit cautious tonight. I don't want to rush past what I feel like God's doing. I think He's, he's moving. So I'm going to start working through this and we might, we might just see where it goes a little bit. Um, but I really have on my heart that um, some people would really experience, again, in a tangible way, the Holy Spirit around the, the, the area of future, the area of your life having purpose. I just really feel in, in a powerful way that you're going to experience something that really just shifts. Maybe something that you've been struggling with, trying to work through, that this evening God can actually shift you in a really big way. I think that's how God works. Often it's just by moment by moment. It's in the process. It's what's next, what's next. And then occasionally it's like there's a big shift where all of a sudden, hang on, something's changed. <laughs> something's different. And I think that, that there's going to be some people walk out of here like that this evening. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay down every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race set before us. Turn the person beside you and say, endurance. If I called the message endurance, you all would have switched off straight away, right? <laughs> Tonight, I want to talk about endurance. Everyone's like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm good. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Just in, stop there. Endured the cross. Jesus being crucified. It was not, it was not a fast death. We're talking about a day of suffering. But he endured it. Why? For the joy that was set before him, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I love that thought, despising the shame. I mean, what a shameful thing in those days to be crucified. And Jesus is like, nah, I don't even care about that. Say what you want. Think what you want. I don't care about that. I really feel maybe this evening there's going to be some people, some pe someone's spoken some stuff over you. You've got some shame around something. It's going to be broken in Jesus' name. You're going to walk out of here free from that shame that's been ensnaring you and holding you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to walk out of here and what that person said, all of a sudden it's going to, it's not going to carry any weight. It's not going to exist. It's not going to not exist anymore, but it's not going to carry the same weight that it carried in Jesus' name. If, you, if that was you, receive that in Jesus' name. Start to stir up your faith on the inside that that thing is going this evening, that those words have no power this evening, that you're walking out of here free this evening. Endurance. What was my point? 
Hey, God wants to take us on a journey through life. Life is not about finish lines and goalposts. Life is about the process. Life is Monday to Friday, nine to five. And I think we've got to understand that in even the most mundane of moments, God can work, God can move, God can do things on the inside of you. I remember talking to a friend who, um, he was kind of talking to me about why I didn't get super involved in the party scene. And I guess when I finished high school, I, you know, had a few months of like, yeah, and then realized this is not how I want to live my life. And, and he was asking why. And I said, I just have seen so many of my friends Monday to Friday wishing away the week, Monday, Tuesday, hump day, yes, we're on the downward hit spiral towards the end of the weekend and just living for that next party, the next experience, the next, next thing. But, but life isn't a party on a Sunday or a Friday night. Life is Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Life's not guaranteed. So what I want to encourage us this evening is that even in those moments, God can be doing something in your life. So let's not bypass the process trying to get to where we want to be, let's determine to live and love every moment of the life that God is calling us to live. How do we do that? I just kind of made fun of myself and I'm like, we're not here to share three points about how to do something. So what does that look like? This is not how to. This is what does that look like? What's it look like? I think it looks like turning up, continuing to turn up. Sometimes if we want to skip the process, it looks like the opposite. I just want to be at the destination. I want to bypass all that hard work and just be where I want to be. Or I want to receive the breakthrough that I think that God has for me. But I think what it actually looks like is just determining to keep turning up. Keep turning up. You know, I often think it's interesting when you see people without a job and You ask what kind of job they do and they say something like, I want to be the prime minister. (laughs) It's like, yo, you've probably got to start somewhere else. (laughs) Maybe you should get a job at Macca's first. Like, you know, there's there's so much power in just getting in in the door and, and starting somewhere and just continuing to keep showing up. I think we can really underestimate the power, underestimate the power of just turning up. Starting somewhere and just turning up. And for most of us, we probably have started somewhere. Can I encourage you? Keep turning up. Just keep turning up with the expectation that today is a good day, that there is purpose in my today, that God can use me today, that this is part of the process. I might not love it, but it's part of the process. And if you hear anything tonight, please don't hear. You must do the same thing for the rest of your life, okay? You can turn up expectant while dreaming about future, while planning about the future, while thinking about what the next step is. Those things aren't mutually exclusive. You know, how I um, how I started playing the drums was I saw someone at youth, I thought it was cool, and I thought, I want to be like them. And then at school, they said, we need a drummer for assembly, and I said, I'll do it. And I couldn't play the drums, <laughs> but I just said, I'll do it. I'll learn. And I got lessons, and it was bad, and now I'm slightly better. Still not awesome. It's been a while, a bit rusty. But it was just it was just turning up. Like, I'm going to just give this a go. That Honestly, God, use me to do whatever. If that looks like preaching, awesome. If it looks like scrubbing dishes, awesome. If it looks like working in some dirty workshop, awesome. God, use me wherever. If you'll use me, I'll keep turning up. If you use me, I'll keep turning up. If I feel like you're not using me, I'm just going to keep on turning up. That's Talitha and I's story. Honestly, people are like, how did you do it? We moved overseas and we, we tell people our story and they're like, that's incredible. And it's like, no, we just, honestly, it was just like, use us. Like, we'll put our hands up. We'll go. God, would you, would you use me? I actually spoke to someone this week and um, their question was, where does church need me? And I thought, that is the most beautiful question. And I just thought, if you have the attitude of, oh, God, where can you use me? He will always find a place to use me. Where you start feeling purposeless is where you feel like God should be using you somewhere else. <laughs> I should be over there. I should be doing this. No, no, no. Just keep turning up. Expect God to be working where 
you're at. Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, wherever, sorry, whenever, sorry, therefore, <laughs> whenever, <laughs> is that whenever? Yes. I'm like, is that an R or an N? Um, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. Whenever you have the opportunity, do good. Good news. After the service, you have an opportunity to do good, to encourage someone, to speak hope into someone, to get to know somebody new. Good news. Tomorrow, you have an opportunity as you roll into work on a Monday to decide, I'm not just going to have monday artists again. I'm going to bring hope. I'm going to bring joy. I'm going to be a carrier of the light that's within me on my mundane Monday. In every season. Sometimes I don't feel like it, but I'm going to keep turning up. Turn up full of faith. I think God can always use you as long as you determine that I'm going to keep moving, that I'm going to keep mobile, that I'm going to keep active. Turn up. Stay faithful in the small. Stay faithful in the small. This is hard because we don't want to be in the small, right? Like, if I'm honest, I want to do big things. I know the big plans that God has for me, plans to give me a big hope and a big future. And there's truth to that. Ephesians 3.20, I can, God can do immeasurably more than all we ask, hope, or imagine by His power that's at work within us. Sometimes we're so, we so want the big thing. And I'm guilty of this as well. But I've got to understand that everything I'm doing is, is God preparing me. It's God on the process of getting me into what He's called me to do. It's, it's, it's preparation for the big. Luke 16.10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with very much. You know, every time I serve when it's unnoticed, I love when no one's watching, when I forgive when it's not appreciated, I'm being faithful with the small thing. I'm being faithful with the little thing that's in front of me. I'm being faithful with the small opportunity I have. Every time I pick up some paper on the floor of the toilets, every time I straighten a curtain or straighten a cord, I'm actually being faithful with the small. I'm saying, God, I'm not too big to do that. I'm not too proud to get down on my knees and clean up a mess. If you're faithful with the small, you'll be faithful with a lot. Have excellence in the small. Excellence. Excellence is not perfection. Often we think excellence is perfection. Excellence is doing the best with what you have. It's doing the best you can with what you've got. And can I just say, it very rarely looks like perfection. It very, very rarely looks like perfection. It's doing the best with what I've got. This is what's in front of me. I'm going to do the best that I can. Seeing the small things. I'm going to show excellence. I'm going to serve as if I'm serving God, even though nobody is going to see it. And that's the thing. God sees it. God sees it when you're faithful with the little. I think keep a good attitude in the small. And even before you start to step into what you really think your big dream is, you're going to actually experience that sense of purpose. It's like, I'm going to be faithful with the small moments that I have. I'm going to be faithful in the small opportunity I have to talk to my friend about what we do at church. Because that's often what the question looks like, right? Sometimes people don't ask us questions like, now, can you explain the five best points about your faith to me? It's usually, what do you guys do on a Sunday night? Be faithful. Be faithful in the small. Oh, we just hang out. No, no, we, we gather together. We encourage each other. We get inspired. And then share what that means for you. I walk out feeling so encouraged. Keep a good attitude with the small. What are you doing when the boss isn't looking? That's important. How quickly do you switch to Facebook when he walks, switch out of Facebook when he walks in the room? How proficient are you with, uh, is it command tab to change, to change pages? Are you being faithful with the small? 
What I'm doing is important. Every small step is preparing you for the future that God has for you. Every small step. We've also got to know that wherever God's taking you, only God's been there. Only God's been where you're going. Only He knows the the future. Only He knows what is to come. I think sometimes we can fall into this trap of looking to other people and even thinking they know what it is. Thinking, if I just had that, if I just had their life, if I was just at that level in my career. So we're not called to compare ourselves. Comparison is the fastest way to kill your joy. It's to look at other people and think, I want what they've got. It's the fastest way to kill your joy. Fastest way for me to think, my clothes aren't cool, is to look at Josh Staines and be like, how does he get so handsome? Quickest way. <laughs> that was a fast wolf whistle. Uh, <laughs> quickest way is to look at someone else and think, I want what they've got. Galatians 4, uh, sorry, Galatians 6, 4 to 5 says, pay careful attention to your own work and then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Pay attention to your own work. That's where you get the satisfaction of a job well done. If I'm competing with anyone, I'm competing with myself. I want to be the best me that I can be. And that only happens, I think, when I'm actually living empowered by God. Scripture I quoted earlier. Not by my strength, not by my might, but by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus working within me. If, if, if I really want to go where God's got for me, then I've got to get with God. I'll be close with God. I've got to prioritize my relationship with God. And I really think as you do, if you can do every day, being faithful in the small, continuing to turn up, I think that's where God actually begins to bring purpose to even the most mundane of things. Even the most mundane of things has purpose when God's involved in it. I think that we've got to be careful. Purpose isn't something to achieve. Purpose is something to live in every single day. Purpose isn't something out there. Purpose is something I can experience today. I think sometimes we talk about purpose like it's something you need to find. You need to find your purpose. It's like, no, let God give you purpose right where you are, right today. Let Him bring purpose to your job at Maccas. Let Him bring purpose to the job that you're doing right now. Let Him bring purpose into the way that you interact with your family. Because purpose isn't something out there. It's something that can be walked in today. It's a lifestyle, a lifestyle of living with purpose. I just really believe it burns so much brighter when I'm doing life with Jesus. When I enter into that the every day with the attitude of, God, would you use me today? And I'm going to do the best I can to listen to you, to live your way, to reflect you. I'm going to do that with excellence because I can't do it with perfection. You get real discouraged real quick if you think that you're meant to be perfect and showing up each day, bringing purpose. Showing up each day and, and really doing with perfection what God calls you to do. You're going to make mistakes. But each day, enter in. God, would you use me today? And this was really on my heart because I think, I think this is something that our, our generation struggles with a little bit. And that's not, that's not a shame thing at all. I think what it is, is it just shows that I think often where we see deficiency, that's where God actually really wants to move. So when he looks and sees people feeling without purpose, he doesn't go, oh, they don't get it. He goes, get ready to receive some purpose. Get ready to receive a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Get ready to step into the freedom and the excitement of living each day like it really matters of living each day, not trying to bypass the process, but getting all that there is out of it. And again, not by giving up my hopes and dreams and just realizing this is where I'll always be. But today, I'm going to walk in purpose. And tomorrow, I might be doing something different. But today, I'm going to walk in purpose. Questions. How do you feel about where you are in life right now? Just stop. 
how do you feel about where you are at life, in life right now? Whatever that looks like. Study, work, family, financial position, relationship status. How do you feel about where you are at life right now? And can you see it as part of the process? Even right now, even as, as, we, as we worship in a moment, I'm just really believing that you're going to start to see it as part of the process, that it's got a purpose, it's got a place, that if we surrender it to God, that He can use even the most mundane. How are you with the small things? How are you when your boss isn't looking? This isn't condemnation. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Be faithful with the small things. And do you need a fresh sense of purpose? That's what my heart for this evening really is. If you'd stand with me. If I get the band back, that'd be great. It's really on my heart, um, and Cass's heart also, actually, she brought it up, um, to create a space just to pray for people this evening. And... As soon as she said that, I was like, I, th- I think I know what we need to pray about. And we don't do this often. Hey, if you're new, you're so welcome. We're so glad you're here. This is probably slightly unusual this evening. Um, <laughs> it's not usually what our services look like. But hopefully we're always faithful to what the Holy Spirit's doing. But what we want to do is, is just make a space. Um, I'm going to ask some of the pastors, some of the leaders in a moment, just going to be hanging around up the front. We're going to sing that Surely the Lord song once again. And we're just going to create an opportunity. If you want someone to stand with you and pray with you as you make a decision, as you say, God, I'm going to give you my mundane. God, I'm going to stop trying to bypass the process. As you make a decision that I'm going to keep turning up, I'm going to keep showing up, I'm going to keep being faithful. If you'd like someone to stand with you and pray with you, we're going to create a space for that up the front. We're just going to sing I'd encourage you, if that's you, something this evening has really spoke to you. I think often we do well to mark what happens internally with a response externally, with a physical response. And I just think that's you. You know exactly it's you. You know what you need to do. And so we're going to create a space for that. Um, then we're going to worship. Then Pastor Slade is going to come back. He's going to tell you what you can do with... Um, if maybe this evening you've heard about this purpose and this great plan that God has for you and you haven't experienced that yet, maybe you wouldn't call yourself a follower of Jesus. Um, we're going to create, this is all for you as well. God loves you. He's got an incredible plan for your life. That's why we do this. It's for people like you so that you could experience the incredible life that we have experienced. So if you'd like to do that, Slater's is going to come up in a moment. He's going to give you an opportunity to raise your hand. Um, so that we can pray for you and stuff. Uh, We can give you a free Bible. But before we do that, we're just going to start singing this song. It's surely the Lord. If you want prayer, would you come forward? We'd love to pray with you. We're not going to rush this. Why don't we even just start to sing? We sing surely the Lord.